The La Brea Tar Pits are a famous Californian hotspot for the deposition of Pleistocene fossils. The ground in this area has been gradually seeping natural asphalt for tens of thousands of years. Over this time, a plethora of ancient creatures have become trapped within the tar. Unable to escape, they died within these tar pits, leaving their bones to become encased and preserved by the asphalt. Among the prehistoric mammals uncovered at this location are the huge Columbian mammoth, the short-faced bear, and multiple species of ground sloth. However, the site's most common large mammal fossils belong to the impressive dire wolf. This prehistoric canine lived during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene, with the last individuals walking the Earth as recently as 9,500 years ago. Dire wolves were found across much of North and South America, and the recent discovery of a dire wolf skull in China suggests that their range extended to Eurasia as well. While their close relative, the modern grey wolf, is known to exist in the far north, dire wolves were limited to lower latitudes by a variety of factors. Firstly, the temperatures in these northern areas were too low for the dire wolf to thrive. These regions were at the time covered by large ice sheets, a habitat which was inhospitable for the wolves. Additionally, the range of this canine species, like all predators, was limited by the availability of its prey. However, in the regions where it did live, the dire wolf would have been found across a variety of habitats. The dire wolf is divided into two subspecies, whose ranges are separated by the continental divide. To the east of the divide, dire wolves were heavier and had longer limbs than the smaller western subspecies. The eastern dire wolf weighed an average of 68 kilograms, while modern grey wolf males weigh approximately 43. While this difference in weight is significant, dire wolves were only marginally larger in size than grey wolves are today. The skull of the dire wolf was also similar to modern grey wolves. However, this prehistoric creature's jawbone was linked to more massive muscles, allowing for the generation of the most powerful bite of any canine. In addition, its fangs had an increased bending strength and were most similar to those of hyenas and felines. This adaptation likely helped dire wolves to subdue their mega herbivore prey without excessive breakage of their teeth. While we know from morphological features that dire wolves must have eaten large prey, what exactly did this Pleistocene predator hunt? Isotope analysis of dire wolf remains in the La Brea tar pits has given us a unique look into this species' diet. These studies indicate that the western horse was an important prey item for dire wolves. In addition, many other species like camels and bison were also hunted, though less frequently. This diet places the dire wolf in direct competition with other Pleistocene hypercarnivores, such as the American lion and Smilodon. The large number of herbivore species hunted by dire wolves implies that this canine was a prey generalist which targeted the most available mega herbivores. In order to effectively hunt their much larger prey, dire wolves likely worked together as a pack. Close modern relatives of the dire wolf, like the African wild dog, are known to bring down prey much larger than themselves using pack hunting tactics. In addition, the large number of dire wolf remains found in the La Brea tar pits implies that many individuals of this species fed there together. During the American megafaunal extinction event, most of the large herbivorous species which inhabited the Americas died out. 
The cause of their extinction is still debated, but likely involved over-exploitation by the newly arrived humans combined with a changing climate. With their main source of food gone, the direwolves soon went extinct as well, but has since become one of the most famous species of prehistoric carnivore to ever exist. 